looking at us still in the rearview mirror and, and he's just getting closer and closer to the traffic and we're just honking the horn and flashing the lights and he's just like, If you remember the Maverick from the drug heist story, this is another story about that Maverick's brush with greatness a few months before the drug heist. So I had a roommate in college, this guy named Steven, and Steven was this fascinating guy. He was super smart. He'd come to school on like an organic chemistry math scholarship, just this huge brain on this guy. However, he wasn't the like geeky, nerdy sort of guy you might think. He was like one of the Beastie Boys. And his interest in organic chemistry, he was had this sort of search for some psychedelic astral plane experience through chemistry. So he was using his skills to like create these like compounds, like Jekyll and Hyde type of things. Like I don't know what he was doing. So he went from this really, really bright guy to this sort of flaky, like he had kind of gotten bitten by the snake a few too many times and, you know, just started doing some really, really wacky things. Uh, you know, but he was a great guy though. We all liked him. And uh, one day it was kind of in the winter time, it snowed and he, he kind of comes on the hall in our dormitory and he said, fellas, you know, my mom loaned me her car and I, I think I screwed it up and I need to get it fixed. Can you help me? And, you know, and I was sort of the de facto repair guy on the hall. I'd grown up on a farm and yeah, I was kind of the guy to fix stuff. So yeah, sure, let's go look at it. So a couple of us all file outside and he said, well, well the car's not here. Well, where's the car? Well, it's over in this parking lot. Okay, so we all get in the Maverick and Ryan, who owned the Maverick, was not involved. He was out of town or something. So a bunch of us pile in the Maverick and we go over to find this car. Now, Stephen normally drove this little Ford Escort, but in this case, he had one of those, like it was the like the R107, like the third generation Mercedes SL. So it was like the one from Dallas, you know, the dark convertible had the hard top on it and all that. And, uh, you know, for him, it was a very uncharacteristic car. And we were just like, wow, man, this car is great. This happens in like 1993, probably. This car was, you know, late 70s, 80s. It was already a 12 or 15 year old car, but to a bunch of kids in a 73 Maverick, it was a Mercedes and wow. You know. What he had done, he had parked it in a parking lot and I guess when he left the parking lot, it looked like open road in front of him. So he was just going to drive out over the sidewalk and there was like a tiny, like a pipe or something that held an old sign up. And he had, it had gone right under the bumper and just sort of crimped the bottom of the radiator. All the antifreeze had come out. Somebody told him that, you know, if you drive it, you're going to blow the motor up, et cetera. So, so we look at it and, uh, you know, we didn't really have any craft at hand to really fix a radiator on a Mercedes. So we're like, okay, well, we just got to get to a shop. And he said, well, you know, I don't want my mom to know because obviously she'll be unhappy. I found a shop though that said they can fix it. I was like, oh, great, well, we'll get it there. He said, well, you know, we didn't really have any money. I don't got any money to tow it. How, you know, how are we going to get it there? And, you know, me being me, I said, hey, let's push it with the Maverick. Pulling it was out of the question because one, none of us had a rope or a tow strap and there wasn't really anything on either of these cars to really affix a strap to. And to be perfectly honest, with Steven's recent experiments in organic chemistry, we kind of felt safer him being in the front than him being in the back because we could at least monitor him or push him away. But if he was behind us, there was no telling what could have happened. But the Mercedes in that era had those really big 70s bumpers, you know, the big chrome with the rubber things. And, and so did the Maverick, had the little bumperettes on the front and sure enough, they matched up just perfectly. So, uh, you know, Steven at this point, uh, due to his chemical experimentations, I was sort of prone to just sort of going in and out. You know, sometimes he'd pop up, be very vivid, and then other times he would just sort of space out. And this is about six months into his experimentation with organic chemistry and was prone to flaking out. So we're trying to work out who's going to ride with Steven and who's going to ride in the Maverick. Well, nobody wanted to be rude, but nobody really wanted to ride with Steven because he might have another one of these weird episodes and just kind of space out. So we all just sort of politely, it'll be safer if there's less weight in the car. Let's just put you in it, you know, and he, you know, he goes along with it. So we put him in the front seat, put the car in neutral, you know, turn the switch on so you can still steer it. And we're just going to push you gently. And, and so where are we pushing you to? It was in the next town, uh, you know, Athens, Georgia, there were dozens, if not a hundred repair shops, but the one he found that could work on this Mercedes was, 20 miles out of town. But, you know, again, we're all 19 years old, so sure, let's do it. It snowed, by the way, so let's just add that to the mix. So this sounds like a great idea. 
So, so we get him in the car and we start pushing. And uh, if you're familiar with Athens, there's a road called East Campus Road, and he was sort of way out East Campus Road. It sort of goes along behind the stadium, and it's a bit of a roller coaster type hill type of road. So, you know, I'm driving the Maverick, and we just tell him, so just drive like normal, but we're just going to push you. We're just going to be like one car, and we're all going to go. And he's like, oh, okay. And, and Stephen had this really funny little affect about him. He would just sort of space out on you for a second, be very thoughtful, and just kind of go. <laughs> yeah. Like when he didn't know what you were talking about or his brain had taken off for a minute. So we start pushing and we get not even a mile up the road and we get to some train tracks and all of a sudden out of nowhere, he just slams on the brakes. So the cars kind of chatter together and we come to a stop. And this is 1993. There's no cell phones. We're just hand signals at this point. We get out, you know, what's going on? He was like, I was looking for a train. It's broad daylight, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and we're like, okay, Stephen, I think we're good. So we slowly get going again. We make it uh, down the hill behind the stadium, uh, up the hill again. It's basically several roads that go together, and they all converge on this traffic light at the bottom of the hill. So we're, we're pushing Stephen, and Stephen was kind of a small guy, and he tended to kind of slouch. So it was just as his, his head was shaved. It was just his little head just kind of poking up over the the rearview mirror, I mean, over the seat. And, and he's watching us in the rearview mirror and, and, and we're driving and we're kind of motioning for him, like, look look at the road. And he's just kind of, he's doing one of these space out things. He's just kind of holding the wheel and looking at us. And we're like, Steve, you know. So as, as we top the hill, you know, we start applying the brakes and, and Stephen doesn't. And he just starts coasting away from us and, and traffic at the bottom is, is going. I mean, it's not busy, but there's a truck and a bus and a car and, and you know, he's just, looking at us still in the rearview mirror and, and he's just getting closer and closer to the traffic and we're just honking the horn and flashing the lights and he's just like, guys. And uh, like something out of a, a cartoon, like he literally just, you know, cars are going, he just goes right through the intersection and starts to go up the hill on the other side. And we're all like, oh, thank God. And then the Mercedes just gets to a halt and then it starts coming back down again. And now, like, we're, we're first in line at the crosswalk, and now he's coming again, and we're like, Stephen, go, stop, stop, hit the brake, stop. And he's just, like, still looking at us in the mirror. And, and just like the first time, cars, truck, he just goes right back through the intersection and slams into the Maverick. Just, I mean, not an accident, but just bam, you know? And, and he's looking at us the whole time. He's just, and just coast right into front of the Maverick. And we just kind of, the bumpers get kind of locked together because he'd hit us enough. He kind of jumped up on top of the little bumperette. So now we're sort of doing this kind of thing. And, but, you know, we're decent-sized guys, so we get out and we kind of bounce the Mercedes a little bit, you know, get him off and unhook everything. And, you know, we're like, Stephen, what happened? He was like, oh, I thought you guys were going to stop. And we're like, Stephen, you're in the front. Like, you you are the brakes. And he's like, oh. So, um, so we have another little powwow with Stephen about, Stephen, this is how this has to work. And we can tell he's slipping into his Jekyll and Hyde thing again. And... Yeah, but we're already committed, so let's let's do it. So we we tell him we need to make a right turn. So we we kind of get him turning. We we go behind him and we we go down a couple of this, the road kind of curves around. We we merge that onto the highway going out towards the town we were going to, and and things go pretty well for about a mile. And we get up to the next red light. Well, as we are coming up to the intersection, pushing him, there's a car right in front of where he's going. All of a sudden, he just turns his blinker on and changes lanes and then we just end up beside him and, and we just pull up next to him and he looks over as if like he had just seen us in traffic he just kind of is like oh hey guys like like he just forgot so you know of course the light turns green horns are honking we have to like get out and direct traffic and we back the car up we kind of get out of town without any more incident and we're back out on the highway again and, you know i've described the maverick in the other video with the bubbly purple tinted windows and the roller glitter paint this thing is just a horrible car that's worth about as much as a pair of shoes. And we're pushing this really beautiful, really nice Mercedes SL with it. And it just looks like the worst, like, I don't know if people thought the Mercedes was towing the Maverick or what was going on, but it was just two cars that shouldn't go together. Like it wasn't some chocolate peanut butter moment. It was more of a pickles and foie gras kind of moment. It just, these two things did not go together. We get a few looks, but we get them out of town and, and we're out on the open road at this point And it's probably, you know, again, it's 15, 18 miles probably out of, we got out of town to get to this place. And we kind of get into a nice little rhythm and we're just kind of cruising. We're only going about, you know, 35, 40, but probably way faster than we should have been. But, you know, again, we're 19. So we're just sort of pushing along like one little car and Steven's just up there steering away. And 
we we kind of get into a, a hillier section of the, the country and again like as we top the hill he just kind of starts coasting away from us and and again we're talking the horn blinking the lights you know no no cell phones back then we're like steven and he's just kind of looking in the mirror like like bewildered as to the gap that was now forming between the two cars so so he's kind of going down this big hill in front of us maybe a few hundred feet get between the cars and he starts going uphill again and we're immediately thinking back to the incident with the traffic light like he's going to roll back down the hill if we stop like we gotta catch him again so so now we're like speeding up and we're doing this like this is like in the cowboy movies where we're trying to like pace to jump onto the train from the stagecoach or maybe like landing a plane on an aircraft carrier or something like we're, we're trying to like as he's slowing down we're trying to like gauge our speed and just get right up behind him in this gentle push and believe it or not it actually worked like it, it actually came off beautifully like I was trying to time it with the Maverick and just as he started losing his speed going up the hill I just kind of caught up with him and just with the slightest little thump we just caught up with him and I don't think he ever even knew what happened so we make it a few more miles and you know without incident the Maverick's okay the Mercedes is okay aside from the the radiator thing and we we get to the the shop and you know he turns his blinker on and we just kind of give him a little shove and he steers it right in and he steers it just beautifully into a parking space and you know, we stop and it was, I guess it was a Saturday morning or something. I don't think the shop was like open. He was going to like drop the car off, do the key drop thing. And we're just out in the middle of nowhere. You know, he stops and he gets out of the car and he looks over to us and he was like, you know, thanks guys. That was really great. And, and we're all just watching the Mercedes roll past him behind him. And it just rolls across the parking lot and hits another car. And it again, thankfully the big giant bumpers, it did a little damage to that car, but the Mercedes is okay. So we, you know, again, this is before security cameras. So we just very quietly pushed the Mercedes back to its parking spot, made sure it was in park this time and drove home. And that was the, perhaps the longest push ever of a Mercedes, especially by a Ford Maverick in the snow. You're here because you like a good car story, but let's be honest. We probably watch enough YouTube videos for a lifetime during the pandemic. It's time to get out of the house and make a story of your own. Extreme Experience puts you in the driver's seat of some of the world's most exciting cars, like this 2020 Corvette C8, at over 30 racetracks across the country. And right now, we're giving away $50,000 for the track experiences and 30% off everything on our website. Head to xxspeed.com to learn more today.